best all-around score of her career. Head coach Mo Mohammed has the Gym Cats peaking toward the SEC championship. Co-head coaches Mark and Renee Cook have built a competitive program in four years with the Arkansas Gym Backs, led by senior Dana McQuillan and sophomore Emily Peacock. The Gym Backs are looking to take it to the next level. It's Kentucky and Arkansas next from the Ozarks. Welcome to Barnhill Arena in Fayetteville, Arkansas, home of the Arkansas Gymbacks. Tonight, inside Barnhill, two SEC gymnastics teams looking to earn some more respect heading into the SEC championship. It's the Kentucky Gymcats and the Arkansas Gymbacks on the mats. Hi, everybody. I'm Corey Kessler. An interesting matchup tonight between Kentucky and Arkansas. Let's start with the Arkansas Gymbacks, a team that has not won an SEC dual meet all year. And oh, are they glad to see Kentucky, a team that they have met six times, winning five of them. And of course, there was one tie. And you know, the Gymbacks certainly would like to keep the trend going. We have a great deal of respect for Kentucky and, and their coaches and, and their program. Uh, we've definitely had their number since coming, starting this program, but they're a strong program this year. They are, they're ranked a little higher than us, and it's going to be a tough meet tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it will be a lot of fun. That's the Arkansas side. Now for the Kentucky side of the story, here's my partner, Lori strong Ballard. Thanks, Corey. This season, Kentucky has had their best start in school history, thanks to increased difficulty, but more importantly, better execution and a stellar freshman class. Already making a splash is newcomer Heather Height, who's put up top scores of 9-9 on both beam and floor. Now, Kentucky has only one competing senior, and that means they rely heavily on the leadership of their junior class, led by Crystal Cook, their top all-arounder, who's ranked 14th in the country. Crystal is a powerful athlete who competes and leads with determination and Crystal has very specific goals in mind. We want to hit every routine, 24 for 24 in our lineup, and I think once we start doing that, it's going to line up like that for every meet after this because we're very close to that, and once we start doing that, our scores will get higher and all of our goals will fall in place. Earlier this season, in his third year as head coach, Mo Muhammad picked up his first SEC win and coach to make the record books again tonight and pick up your first win against this Arkansas team. What needs to happen? Well, what needs to happen is we need to stick our sets and do what we do. We need to make sure that we make our landings on ball, make our routines, and no wobbles on beam. I think if we do that, we can come out victorious. Well, last week you were a little bit unstable, had some uncharacteristic slips on beam. With that being the last event tonight, are you concerned that your young team will be able to handle the pressure? Well, I think they've, they've learned from mistakes. You know, the slips we made weren't major, so we had no falls. We just had some, some minor bobbles here or there. And I think they're a little bit more hungry today, and they're just going to go out and do what they do. Well, good luck tonight. So Kentucky looking for their first win against Arkansas, and Arkansas looking for their first SEC win. Two very closely matched teams with a lot on the line. Corey? And Arkansas will rely heavily on Dana McQuillan, the senior. She'll be first up on vault. We come back to Fayetteville. The Fayetteville faithful are dancing. It's Hawk Heaven. You don't want to miss this. Stay with us. In the oh, they're calling the hogs in Fayetteville, and they'll start off on the vault. They will lead them off with Dana McQuillan. Coming off that superb effort, Lori, last week, she'll lead the gym backs on vault. And Mark says that this is a much improved event for Arkansas. Five out of six athletes have that coveted 10-0 start value. Now, Dana does perform a vault that's only scored out of a 9.9, .9, but she is so consistent and clean on this event. Handspring front pike, pretty good landing, just that tiny hop. Dana had a 9-7 as a high score this season. Remember, it scored out of a 9.9. .9. Let's take a look here. A little leg separation in the pre-flight, a little bit of bent knees, and a tiny hop. Impressive, 9.775. They hit 23 of 24 routines at Bama last week. Got to be feeling good. Here's the lineup for Kentucky on bars. They will start off with Lucy Bergen, a nursing major from Birmingham, Alabama. 
And Lucy is the lone senior competing on this team. Injuries have hit the rest of the class. She's a great bar worker. A career high tying 9.875 on bars against Florida. You know she can do it, Lori. And doing a great job there. Her major release move was in combination and a Pike Jaeger. A little bit short on these handstands. Judges want to see that vertical position and the dismount. A double front again, finishing with big difficulty. Takes the step on the landing. This is the combination work. The half into the heely. There's the major release move. A Pike Jaeger. It's an E-level skill, two tenths bonus. You have to get plenty of height to finish the rotation before your feet pass the bar. And a 9.750 for Lucy Bergen. We go back to vault and Audra Loveless, the senior, Ridge Creek, Oklahoma. 9.7 against Missouri early in the year. A very solid event for Audra, doing a very difficult souk layout full. She does take the step on the landing, but that is one of the most difficult vaults, I believe, in that 10-0 start value category. I feel it's much harder than the Yurchenko, the round off entry onto the board. It's so difficult to get the enough power to finish the rotation and the full twist. And a 9.80 has to be pleased with that. That will tie her season best. Meanwhile, junior gym cat Crystal Cook looks to carry her cats when we come back. I'm again here at Barnhill Arena, home of the Arkansas Gymbacks. Welcome back to Barnhill Arena, our SEC Meet of the Week. Kentucky and Arkansas, this is freshman Natalie Rubenstein from Hollywood, Florida, on the uneven bars. Tough combination here at the start. They have to do two bar changes. There's one, and her second one in combination. Impressed the coach most, says she's an awesome gymnast, solid in every event. Doing a great job on bars here, a hot full, and a big dismount. Just a freshman adding some strong difficulty to this Kentucky lineup. 9.85 Take a look at that mount combination, the Shaposhnikova, one of my favorite elements on bars. Beautiful execution and swing out of it right into her shoot over. Again, looking for those handstand positions. So her team's pleased, she has to be as well. A 9.875 for the girl they like to call Nat is her nickname. We move on to Samantha Cortez on vault. Started as an all-arounder. Samantha from New Jersey. Always consistent on vault, says her coach. Again, a 10-0 start value. Round off back handspring, layout full. Great distance on that vault. This vault is very similar to the vault that we saw Audra perform earlier, but the entry is different. Take a look. She does the round off, the Yurchenko entry. Round off onto the board, a blind reach with the hands. She gets plenty of power, has to pike down just slightly. Like to see a straighter body position. So a 9.85 for Samantha Cortez. That's the top score for Arkansas after the first rotation. There you see the cumulative score for the team after the first rotation of 49 even. And here's Crystal Cook. She's next up on bars, the journalism major from Austin, Texas, a leader for this team, and her coach knows that all too well. They rely on her. I think she grasps the role of being a leader. I think she loves the, the, the pressure, and she, she loves the, uh, the younger athletes looking up to her and, and, and doing a great job. Uh, I can't say enough about her and what she's done and what she's emerged to be this year for us. I think I am now. I think after a couple meets into the season, I started to see it, and I think I lead by example more than by my words. And Lori, her coach, also says one of the keys for him is to convince Crystal of her own potential. Well, Crystal is very modest about her abilities and about her leadership role on this team. She says that everyone really needs this team. And Crystal scored a huge 9-9 on this event. Last meet against Florida. Excellent pirouette work into handstand. Kachev straddle back to handstand again. Very solid and precise. Not many deductions so far. It may come down to the landing. Oh, definitely another big score. 
You know, Mo said he'd go on record to say that they had one of the best bar lineups in the NCAA. In terms of difficulty, we've seen routines with two E-level skills and some nice big dismounts like this. Now it'll come down to executing, and Crystal did a great job of executing this routine. Nice job from her teammates. A 9.925 for Crystal. Impressive score there. So after the first rotation, she has the top score for her team. And that will push Kentucky to a slight edge with that 0-2-5, just a fraction more than the home team, Arkansas Jimbacks. Can they fight back? We'll find out next. Welcome back to Barnhill Arena. The visiting Wildcats with a slim margin on the home team. They'll see if they can extend that lead as they head to the vault. Their lineup right here, you see the Heather Height, the sensational freshman from West Virginia. We'll see her for the first time. And Crystal Cook, who's already put up an impressive score, a 9.925. But we start off with Heather Height, the freshman, just 4'11", from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Very quick and powerful athlete. Doing a Yurchenko layout, full vault. Good distance all the way down the mat. Could have had a little bit more pop in the height. She had to pike down just slightly to finish the rotation. Coach Mo says she's an all-American type athlete. You know, with this new vaulting table, it really enables the gymnasts to put a little extra power into the Yurchenko-style vaults. Heather had a slight bent elbows on the table that will affect her score. 9.775. As we look at the Arkansas lineup on bars, there you see Katie Hardman. She has had her share of bad luck, to say the least. Boy, Katie had some off-season knee surgery, came back from that, and then got into a pretty severe car accident. And in fact, that car accident has really kept her out of the gym more than the knee surgery. See if that adversity has made her stronger, Lori. Great to see her strong and back competing. She's so wonderful to watch, always composed. Starting off with a nice handstand to Dukachev. It's very important to hit those handstand positions. Shoot over to handstand on the low bar. A little short on that last one. Giant full and the dismount. A double tuck. A little bit simple on the difficulty, but execution was phenomenal. Certainly didn't lack confidence in that landing, it appeared. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. You want to nail it exactly like that. The judges are looking for no movement, no struggle on the landing. She knew exactly where it was and showed it off with those pumps of the fist. Not inhibited by that knee surgery whatsoever or apparently by that automobile accident. A 9.825 for Katie Hardman. And next up, Natalie Rubenstein on vault. The national qualifier in 2005 says she has a good luck care bear to help her through the event. <laughs> you know, this Kentucky team's really having a good time out there, and they can show it off on vault, use that energy to pump each other up. A big vault for Natalie. Yurchenko layout full, scored out of a 10. Natalie really explodes off this table. Take a look, nice strong push. She really sets the direction before the twist, gets good height, a little bit low on the rotation. She did take a small hop forward. A 9.8 for Natalie. Looks like the Care Bear brought her share for Natalie. Meanwhile, Emily Peacock on bars coming up next as the Gym Backs try to overtake the Gym Cats. Plus, a second look at Crystal Cook this time on vault. We'll be back in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Every day. In Welcome back. Arkansas's Cassie Drew. Some impressive numbers, Lori, a few weeks ago at Florida. A 9.8 in the uneven bars. Arkansas's media notes say Drew getting it done. And Mark had a lot of praise for Cassie's hard work, improvement, and value to the team. Opening with a toe on Shaposhnikova. Giant half, front giant half. Here's her major release mo move. An out bar to Kachev. See Mark Cook, co-head coach, adjusting the landing mat for her dismount. She struggled with this a little bit in warm-up. The timing was off, and she's way too low again, and that's a oh. fall. Oh. 
big disappointment. See Whoa. Coach Cook telling her it's okay, knowing that, that this is a mistake that she can fix. You can see she peeled off. Her hand slipped from the bar before she had a chance to tap her toes up to get the needed height to finish two rotations in that laid out position. Very difficult dismount. And as a result, a 9.3 for Cassie Drew. This is Melissa Lee, the senior from Orlando, Florida. Six athletes compete, so they can drop one score. And right now, they hope to drop Cassie's score and pick up some big ones here, especially for Melissa, who really is a bar specialist. This is her only event. But the pressure is on right now. Nice combination work. Giant full, giant half. Pike Jaeger, big difficulty. Just the dismount, the team is cheering her on. They need this right now, and she wow. gets the job done. Nice. Excellent job. Nice, and her teammates know it. Once again, for Melissa Lee on bars. Beautiful extension in everything she does. Look at the angles out of her shoulder, really pushing out of them. Combination work into the Pike Jaeger, that E-level release skill, good difficulty, excellent execution. And as you said, excellent execution equals a 9.9, .9, Lori, for Melissa Lee. Here's our second look at Crystal Cook. Cookie, as they like to call her. In 2006, you saw her score. She can vault with the best of them, Lori. Absolutely. Crystal is a powerful athlete, which certainly helps on this event. A different vault than we've seen tonight, the Yurchenko half front layout, and she has beautiful technique on this vault. She performs it exactly the way the book says it should be done. You see the half twist first, and then a true front layout. It's scored out of a 10 and a little bit more difficult to land because the landing is blind. You don't see that mat before the feet hit, and she likes it. <laughs> Giving a little performance for her team. Yes, she is. She's not calling out the hog. She's dancing the gym cat dance. And Crystal Cook with a 9.9, .9, the top score after the second rotation in vault. So Kentucky with the slim edge still, 49 and a quarter as we move along now to Emily Peacock on bars, the sophomore. So Kentucky has completed six strong vaults and remember Arkansas has one fall right now. So they are depending on Emily to hit. Some combination into her Jaeger Salto. Salto down to the low bar. Corey, she absolutely nailed this dismount in warm up. She needs to do it again under pressure at the end of a bar routine, and she does it. Wow. And she knows it. So basically, both teams are getting the job done here. Arkansas can throw out that fall, that low score from Cassie, and they will definitely add this one to their tally. And just when they needed it most, they get it, Lori. That's better than the last score, 9.950 on bars for Emily Peacock. In fact, Corey, it's a school record. Emily Peacock puts up a new school record for Arkansas. Impressive, and that will take Arkansas into the lead with an overall score after the second rotation in that event, 49.2. And that gives Arkansas the lead for the first time tonight. We'll be back to see if the Wildcats can fight back. Welcome back to Barnhill Arena. The Jimbacks have a slight lead over the Kentucky Wildcats. Corey Kessel along with Lori Strong Ballard. Lori, we've seen quite a meet so far for our SEC Meet of the Week. We've already seen some amazing performances by both teams. The scores have been high. Almost a little more generous than some of the other meets that we've seen this year. We'll see what Arkansas can counter with on the beam. Emily Peacock, Cassie Drew, Rachel Barnett, Dana McQuillan. We've already seen her as we have already seen Katie Hardman. And this is Emily Peacock. Emily has hit every meet this year as the leadoff. And she just went 9-8-2-5 against Alabama at their last competition. Of course, she's riding high right now after setting a school record on bars. That was an incredible routine on bars. Let's see if she can equal that. Two back handspring layouts. 
Lifts that front foot up just a little bit. One-tenth deduction for the wobble. Emily's doing a good job in thinking through the routine. Yes, there have been a couple wobbles there, but she's minimizing them. Amazing that that beam is only four inches wide. It's quite a difficult event to compete, especially when you're under that kind of pressure to be able to stick with your technique that you are drilling every single day in the gym. Emily has a huge dismount planned. You can see her setting up right here. Round up, double back. That's an E-level skill according to the collegiate rules. Huge difficulty at the end of the routine. Couple wobbles throughout this routine, but again, a very stable job from Emily. It really helps the team atmosphere to, to build their confidence knowing your first up's gonna hit. A 9.725, obviously that elite dismount helping her in the scoring. And as we look at the Kentucky floor lineup, Lucy Bergen, Kristen O'Shields, Natalie Rubenstein, we've already seen her, Crystal Cook once again, and Heather Height, fabulous freshman. This is Natalie. We like to call her Nat Rubenstein, a floor exercise. Now, Kentucky would really like to make up some ground on this event to either close the gap or pick up the pace a little bit because they had to beam and they want to take the pressure off their beam team, opening with a front through to a double pike. Series here, double turn to a popa, a little bit shy of rotation there. The judges want to see all of those turning elements fully completed so that they can give them full value and credit for their bonus. Another difficult tumbling pass coming here. A triple twist and not enough power. She puts her hands down. That's an automatic 5 tenths deduction. midway through the season. This is the point where sometimes the athletes start to feel that fatigue. They feel some of the chronic injuries starting to set in. Natalie looks a little bit tired here, heading into her final tumbling pass. Big endurance required for this event. Double twist, pretty solid there. Simply not enough energy to complete that triple twist middle pass. That'll hurt. We'll see how the judges mark it. Arkansas got the support of her team as we say the replay. Always very important for the team to be upbeat even through mistakes like this because they have other competitors coming up who really need to pick up the ground. And with that 5 10th deduction, she still manages a 9.125, but that may hurt the team overall. We'll see Cassie Drew now. Her top beam score, you see, a 9.80 this season. So important for Cassie to put that fall on bars aside and hit a solid beam routine. Tumble series here. Take a look at the second element. It's on one arm. That increases the difficulty, and she's solid. She had the 14th all-time best score in the all-around at Florida a few weeks ago. Another one-arm back handspring. That's a C-level skill. She combined it with a C-level jump, so she does get bonus points for that. Cassie was a very accomplished level 10 gymnast, but I must say that her gymnastics has improved since she's been at Arkansas. She's a more confident athlete. major ankle injury last year that she had to overcome. She's increased her difficulty on every event, and a strong dismount back handspring gained her full solid landing. Impressive, she's pleased. Let's see what the judges say. A big comeback for Cassie. She had that mistake on bar. She looked bewildered after her bar routine. She came back here with great focus on one of the most difficult events to compete. Awaiting the score, 9.8. A decent score for her. That's Arkansas building a bit of momentum. Meanwhile, Heather Height 
and the Kentucky Gym Cats look to respond. This is Jeff Jones from Bill Hurd. Welcome back to Barnhill Arena. An intense, focused look for team leader Crystal Cook of the Kentucky Gym Cats. This meet means a lot to her, Lori. Any conference dual meet definitely means a lot to these teams. For Kentucky, it's also important for them to get a nice, strong, high away score. And that will contribute to their RQS, their regional qualifying score. These teams are trying to qualify all year round to the regionals. And then from there, they can qualify to the national championships. Of course, Crystal's looking good in terms of our all around, putting up already two big scores on the board, 9925 and a 9-9. I like the spunkiness of the routine. I like the music. It's got some, some diversity to it. Athletes always trying to find music that will show off a little bit of their character. Doing a nice job with the twisting jumps, completing them. Yeah, I've talked to judges, I've asked them what they find is the most difficult event to judge. I assumed it would be bars because the elements are so quick and back to back, but a lot of judges find this event the most difficult to judge because of all of those intricacies, those jumps, they must be completed. Sometimes they're a full, sometimes a one and a half. Ending with a front layout, front layout, three clean tumbling passes, nice high amplitude on all three of them. Almost like she wants to tell her team, we can come back in this, have solid routines, confidence, we're going to be okay. She's very stoic in this performance, consistent, nothing fancy in terms of difficulty. A double tuck open, double pike middle, and a front tumbling pass, last tumbling pass, but it was high and executed fairly well. And it leads to a 9.825. Her teammates know they can rely on her. Meanwhile, the elite gymnast herself, Katie Hardman, you saw her top beam score, 9.775. An interesting entry to the beam routine for Katie. Adding a little originality, of course. The fans who come out to watch these competitions really love those intricate, interesting elements. Katie is absolutely beautiful on this event. She actually performs her routine. Two back handsprings, layout, nice extension through the knees, solid on the landing. Interesting reading about her. She says she likes to solve puzzles and logic problems. Doesn't seem like she's too puzzled by her routine. She's doing well so far. A smile on her face. She actually has facial expressions. I talked about her performing on this event. Something that we often see on floor, a little bobble right there. It takes a very confident athlete to be able to perform on beam, to have those beautiful arm movements, and to look like you're enjoying yourself up there. Huge dismount, wow. a gainer full in a pike position from the end of the beam. You know, she struggled with that in warm up, but boy, did she come to compete, nailing it right there. So far this season, Lori, we haven't seen too many dismounts similar to this, kind of a, a twisted turn. Can you explain what it is? It's a fairly new dismount in the last couple of years. It's been upgraded in terms of its difficulty rating. She even makes it more difficult by doing it in the piked position. You have to get plenty of distance from that beam so you don't catch your feet. And she got a 9.875 for her efforts. Katie Hardman, the best score for Arkansas after the third rotation. The cumulative score is 48.975. So that effort by Katie, slightly higher than Crystal Cook's floor routine. Here's Heather Height on the floor. Her top score is a 9.9. Coach Mo says she's a phenomenal gymnast. We've talked about it before. Looking forward to what she will become, Lori. She really could be one of the top all-arounders in this conference. We haven't seen her compete on bars in this competition. She's so strong on three events. You see her landing on a landing mat right there. It must be outlined so the judges know if they go out of bounds. Quite often the athletes will use those landing mats to save their ankles on the hard landings. Heather is very enjoyable to watch on this event. She stays true to the 
traditional ballet and gymnastic style of dance. She has great jumps we just saw there in that combination. She also has a little bit of attitude and that sassiness and high energy that, that goes over well with the crowd and these judges. Placed second in this event in a regional meet in high school and now just a freshman a year removed from that regional meet. Front tumbling, front full to a front layout. Athletes must show at least three different saltos in a routine. She's already met that requirement with her opening pass and then the front tumbling pass with two different saltos. Final tumbling pass. Double twist, clean landing. Pretty strong on the tumbling, but what was most impressive about this routine was how clean and precise all of her jump combinations were. This is the front tumbling pass. There's the front full into an immediate punch front layout. Timing is so important, and they have to stick to the technique. <laughs> A unique high five there for Heather Height. A 9.825 in her floor routine. So, Crystal Cook and Heather Height tied after the third rotation for the top score in that routine of 48.850 is the cumulative score. Meanwhile, the gym backs had a pretty good beam rotation. They'll be next up on floor, and they'll need a good routine because they are trailing ever so slightly to the Kentucky Wildcats in our SEC Meet of the Week. We'll be back with the gym backs on the floor. Keep your elbow in. The I'm very confident what our kids can do on beam, and, and they are confident as well. So, you know, we dream of meets now where we can go into beam, you know, a tenth or two ahead or maybe a tenth below and, and have a chance to knock it out and, and, and pull out a victory. I mean, that's the sweetest gratifying wins when you can do it on beam at the end of the meet. And, Coach, now is your chance. Barely leading over the gym backs here at Barnhill Arena. Such a positive influence for his team. A good motivator. Here's the lineup for Beam. Looking for Kentucky on Beam. Chrissy Cannon, Lucy Berg, and Heather Height. Sensational freshman, already seen what she can do. And Crystal Cook, speaking of Crystal, there she is, Cookie, as she's known. We've already mentioned, leading the all-around. A chance to win the all-around competition, Lori. Well, Corey, she's pretty much dominating the all-around right now with three great scores under her belt. She's also been quite the team player tonight, showing a lot of team camaraderie. This whole Kentucky team looks at ease. They warmed up nicely on this event, and it tells you a lot since their beam coach, Jackie McCarter, stayed home ill, and since they struggled in their last competition on this event. Tremendous focus from Crystal heading into her tumble series, but can spring layout two foot, solid. The same type of focus we saw in her floor routine. Determined. It's amazing to see how Crystal moves from being in the box, in that focus, when she is competing and actually doing her event, and then she steps out of that and really plays it up to her team, and it looks like she's having a great time pumping up her team. That's what really makes a great athlete and a great gymnast to be able to step from one arena to the other in terms of your mental focus. There's the dismount, front full, nice clean landing, solid performance. That has to feel good for Crystal Cook. She knows that her team needed it, leading ever so slightly. That should help extend the lead a bit. Crystal showing aggressiveness throughout this routine, including that difficult front tuck, solid as can be. A 9.875 for Cookie. <laughs> Meanwhile, the gym backs look to get some momentum back here at home. One of three home meets in a row for the gym backs. And they're hoping to get it off to a good start. Cassie Drew. For Arkansas on the floor routine, Dana McQuillan, Samantha Cortez, and there you see Emily Peacock at the bottom. We've already seen what she can do. And how about a 10 in the background? We see that 10. She scored a 9.7, did Dana, this season in the floor routine. 
We haven't seen very many tens at all this season. The judges are being a little bit more strict this year, really taking those deductions exactly like they would in the JO program at level 10. Now we've noticed at this competition, the scores have been a little bit more generous. Both Mark and Renee said that at their last competition against Alabama, they thought the scores were tight. Double pike opening, solid. You're gonna find that though, from competition to competition with different judges, there are gonna be some natural fluctuations in the scoring, but that's why the national championships and the SEC championships are judged with the same judges, all six teams on the same floor. Arkansas needs a good performance here. Remember, they're trailing ever so slightly to the visiting Kentucky Gymcats. Front layout, front layout, good power there. Holds on to the landing. I'm enjoying Dana's routine this year. She, she sometimes comes across as a little shy, a little reserved, but she's bringing out some of her character and some style in this routine, almost a little sassy. I think it's the, the senior thing. The senior thing. Really coming into her own now in her final season, showing a little bit of that confidence that we see from the senior competitors. Last tumbling pass. It's a difficult one, especially in terms of her endurance. A double tuck. She pulls that one out. Great job for Dana. And she knows that performance will help her team in the overall score. Just what they need to get back in this meet. Nothing huge in terms of difficulty in the opening pass. Just a double pike, but it's clean and solid. And I was most impressed, though, with the difficulty, the double tuck in her final pass. Let's see if the judges were impressed, and they were. A 9.75 for Dana McQuillan. A season best for Dana. And Kristen O'Shields now, the sophomore for UK on beam. Kentucky with a solid 9.875 from Crystal, and Kristen has had a high of a 9.925 on this event, so you know what she's capable of. Switch leap, straddle, straddle. Very aggressive and nice full split position. Four inch wide beam, really making an effort to square herself up on this difficult round off layout. You, know, you see a lot of the athletes doing their tumble series from back handsprings, two back handspring layouts, back handspring layout, layout. But that's, that's a little bit different, almost refreshing to see a tumble series out of a round off. More difficulty there, front tuck, and she adds the jump. Athletes are looking for five tenths in bonus, plus they must have the required elements, including the full turn right there. Trying to work high and releve up on her toe. The best beam workers in the country work high on their toe, dismount, double twist, and a clean, solid landing. <laughs> An ecstatic teammates surrounding Kristen. They know it was a solid effort on beam. It's amazing. Sometimes your teammates are doing more work on the sideline with every skill, especially this very important tumble series here. So difficult with the round off. They are pulling for you with every movement on the beam. And there it is, a 9.925. So as good as Dana McQuillan was on the floor exercise, Kristen. Puts Kentucky in a good position. Meanwhile, Heather Height tries to keep the pressure on Arkansas for her gym cats. And Emily Peacock, ready for her floor routine. Are you ready to watch? We are. Come back and join us in a minute. Arma. Welcome back to Barnhill Arena. Corey Kessler, Lori Strong Ballard, and that's Katie Hardman on the floor. Katie's competing for the first time on floor all season. Remember the two major setbacks, the off-season knee surgery, then of course, that very scary car accident. Hasn't seemed to lack any confidence throughout the meet. What a great time for her to be able to come back at a home meet in front of the home crowd. An important and very competitive SEC dual meet. The team needs Katie. And maybe she has an angel watching over her favorite TV show, Lori. 
touched by an angel. Katie has beautiful arms. Nice positioning all the way down to the fingertips. Really adds a fullness to her dance. We talked about her performance level on beam. She also has that here on floor, two front layouts, a big smile. She knows the hometown is watching, the home crowd. She's not faking this level of performance. She is truly enjoying herself being back out on the floor. Many athletes say that this is their favorite event to compete, especially in front of that home crowd. Now, when you have not competed floor all year, this can be the most difficult pass. Routine is a minute 30 long. Very important, st important to have that endurance, not a problem. And huge difficulty, a double pike. Great job for Katie, good to see her back. The bounce and spirit in her smile, you can tell a solid effort for Katie Hardman. And the floor routine should help boost in the scoring. We talked about Arkansas's improved difficulty. We saw it here with Katie ending with the double pike. Now she opened with the double tuck, which quite often you would think would be the easier of the double salto elements, but she ends with the big double pike. Looks like Katie's ready for more. 9.850 for Katie Hardman. That certainly puts the home team in good position. Let's see what Heather Height can counter with. Mo says he and the team feel confident knowing someone as consistent and solid as Heather anchors this beam team. She says it's her favorite event. Even as a freshman, she shows no intimidation. The intensity on her face, front aerial. Slight pause, back handspring layout. She'd like to connect that, but she won't lose her 10-0 start value. Even though she didn't connect it, she made the right decision and avoided a fall or a possible wobble. Again, just like Floor, she has beautiful jumps, nice extension, and fully completes all of those 360-degree twists. Switch side. Gainer layout, another difficult D-level skill. Nice variety of skills, a solid landing on the dismount. What a great routine. Kentucky is definitely putting up a fight. Heather Height counters with a solid effort. Here's that first combination of elements. She will get extra bonus points if she connects the front aerial right into the back handspring layout. You can see that she had to steady herself slightly, but again, she won't lose too many bonus points. She still has that 10-0 start value. As they await the score, a 9.9 .9 for Heather Height. So it's point counterpoint. Katie Harbin, a nice floor exercise. Heather Height, a 9.9 .9 on the beam. It looks like it's gonna come down to the wire, Lori, after the fourth rotation. A 9.9, .9. Kristen O'Shields, the best in that routine, a 49.350 cumulative score. It will come down to the wire as we see Emily Peacock gearing up for her floor routine. Taking a deep breath, trying to stay focused while still performing on this event. Emily, a sophomore, who is very composed in everything she does, but boy, is the pressure on right now. Yes, it is, Lori. She knows she has to get a good score to keep her team in it. Opening pass, double pike. Plenty of height and rotation. Emily is truly performing. Double turn, tuck double. One and a half, front layout. Holds it in bounds there, so important. 
This competition is coming down to every last tenth. She's having fun. Deep breath before that final tumbling pass. So important, can Arkansas do it? Emily does it, amazing double tuck. We'll see what the judges say. <laughs> Look at her teammates, Lori. They know she hit that, hit that routine. This has been a fabulous night for both of these teams. They've shown incredible team spirit, supporting every single one of their teammates. Emily doing a great job right to the end. Emily Peacock, like a beautiful swan, a 9.875. And that's the top score along with Rachel Barnett after the fourth rotation, a cumulative score. 49.175. So with that last routine, the home team has done it by 100th of a point. Let's send it down to Lori. Thanks, Corey. A record-breaking night and a season-high performance from you. Great win. It was an awesome meet. A lot, a lot of fun. And how about that bar performance from Emily, just a sophomore, setting a school record? Emily is just awesome on bar. She's very, very consistent and very clean, and she just walks and workout every day. The team looked very confident and quite aggressive, especially on balance beam. How important is it to be in that kind of mindset? It's absolutely important. You have to go out there and attack it and be aggressive and, and take control. And they did a great job tonight. And, you know, I feel they they definitely competed to their potential. Renee, with just a few weeks left before the SEC championships, is this team where you need it to be? We're getting there. We're finally competing where we're capable of, and we just need to keep it up. Well, congratulations. A big win, your first SEC win of the season. Back to you, Corey. Thanks, Lori. A win by Arkansas and a dominant performance in the all-around by Crystal Cook. She is your all-around winner. What a meet here in Barnhill Arena. A valiant effort by the Kentucky Gym Cats, but not enough to hold off the Arkansas Gym Backs. The Gym Backs get their first SEC win of the season, their sixth over Kentucky. For Lori Strong-Ballard, I'm Corey Kessler. We'll see you next week for LSU and Bama.